Hey everyone and a very very good evening. So before I start this session, first let me know if I'm audible and visible to you or not. Quickly, just write in the comment section. Give me a quick quick thumbs up so that I'll understand. Yes? Kungu and excited for the session. I'm excited too. Yes, we have Mohammad Tabrez, we have Shada Baikun. Diksha Sharma is here. Yes, I can see thumbs up and hearts. Kamla Chauhan is here. Yes, Kanishk Prakash. Good evening, Charvi Parker. Good evening, Fennel. Yes, I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. Completely visible and audible. Bhagya Vardhan, good evening. Vartika Kansal, Sri Vidya. Sri Vidya Nokala, Sahil Shinde. Good evening. Prashika K. Bhavna Smita, Facts Ki Dunya. Lucifer, hi, you are new here. I hope you would like this session. Yes. Ishaat Kesarwani, good evening. Hi, Tejasvi Pirmal. Good evening, Ronak Singh. Hi, Kashi Nathan. Hi, D. Deepak. Tanu Kumari is here. Hello, Mohammed Khan. Rishit Salanki is here. And we have Yash Vardhan Rathor. Good evening, Lakshan India. Hi, Priyanshu Anand. Good evening, Shanvi Singh. Yes, Sunaina Bhadoria, Naginda Ramini. Ashish, okay, your name is Ashish. All right. Hi, Lavanya L. Sveta is here. Yes. Kashif Ishtiar Khan, good evening. All right, all right. So there is no glitch at all, so we can begin. My name is Kushbu and a very, very warm welcome to yet another wonderful session. So today what we are going to study, we are going to discuss the case-based questions for term 2 exams, right? So this is something new for us in this syllabus, yes? So let's not waste any more time here. Let's start the session. So here it is our first question. So before the World Cup final, a football player is training on the ground. He scores by kicking the ball into the goalpost. So football's projectile is quadratic as follows, right? So when the player kicks the ball, you can see that it's, it makes a, it follows a parabolic path, right? It's a U-shaped graph over here. Yes. All right. And it's, it's basically given by this equation, y equals to minus x squared plus 60x plus k. That's the quadratic equation. So there are two questions uh, based on this. We need to answer them. So if footballer kicks the football from origin, then find the value of k. Please pay attention to this because this is these type of questions are something new for you, right? All right. And the second one is the football tips directly at the goal post after being kicked. Calculate the distance between the footballer and the goal post. Now we will answer these questions one by one. So first one is, if footballer kicks the football from origin, then we have to find out the value from k, right? So you can see that this is the origin over here, right? Now if this is the origin, at origin we know that x coordinate is 0 as well as y coordinate will be 0. So if both of them are 0 and this path over here, it's a parabolic path, right? It is basically defined by this equation. I can simply say x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. Simply I'll substitute in this equation over here. We get minus 0 square plus 60 times 0 plus k equal to 0. You get the value of k from here which is 0. Yes, a simple one. Yes. Uh, right, Fennel, not visible, D Deepak, Lavanya, please refresh the screen once. Yes, very, very good evening, Vidushi Thakkar. Yes, I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. Yep. Yeah. Easy one? Yes, K is zero. All the very best, Rishit. All right. Now let's move to the next part of this question. The footballer, the football tips directly at the goal, right? It hits the goal here, you can see, post after being kicked. So once the footballer kicks the football, it directly hits the, hits the goal. Now we need to calculate the distance between the footballer and the goal post. Footballer is here at the origin and goal post is here, right? We need to calculate this distance. This is the x-axis, right? The distance that we will calculate that will basically nothing but the value of x over here. So what is our equation? Equation is already given in the equation, in the question, right? Now we know one thing, at origin or at goal post, the y-coordinate will be 0, right? All right, so what I'll do here is simply I'll say that minus x squared plus 60x, k is already 0, so I'll put k 0. 
equals to 0 because y coordinate is 0. Let's take minus x common. We have x minus 60 equal to 0. x is 0. Two values of x we are getting, x0 and x60. But x can't be 0, right? Distance can't be 0. So definitely because ball has moved a distance. It has covered some distance. So definitely it is 60 meters. That would be our final result. An interesting question, right? Yes, Lavanya, please refresh the screen because it's visible to the other students. Right, Bhagya Vardhan, absolutely. Thank you, NDA girl. That's okay, Papiya. Students, other students were missing you actually. Yes. Uh, right, 60. 60 is the answer. Correct, correct. Uh, all right, all right. So this was the question based on, uh, it was based from, it was from quadratic equations, right? Now let's take a look at the next one. So the backbone of any trade and business is truck transportation, right? A transportation company is experiencing a problem with its logistic chain technology. As a result of which, a vehicle did not leave on time. Now to overcome the delay, a vehicle starts at a speed of 50 km per hour. This is the initial speed, right? This is the initial speed. Now uniformly increases its speed. So every Every hour, the speed increases by 5 kilometers per hour. Every hour. So first of all, whenever you read a case study, let me give you a, give you a very important tip. Most of the things that are written over here, they are of actually no use, honestly. So you need to look for the keywords, the main important information. So like here, the important information is that vehicle starts at 50 kilometers per hour. Right? Rest of it is just a story. That's an initial speed. Now it is... Cover, it is increasing its speed uniformly. So every hour, the speed is increasing by 5 km per hour. So from here only you can guess that it is a case study from which chapter? Yes, that's arithmetic progressions. Right, Angelina? Right, Rishid? Yes. That's good, Manthan. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, D. Deepak. All the very best for your exam. All right. Now, what we need to find out here is two questions are there based on this. First one is, what is the truck speed at the end of the sixth hour? Okay. Let's answer this question first. Right? Truck speed at the end of sixth hour. So, in the C, it starts with, a, with an initial speed. Right? So, let's denote that by V0. Right? For the first star. Then it increases uniformly by something which was given 5 km per hour. We are denoting this general denotion as D. That's the common difference. Like this, it increases by the same speed every hour. So from here, we understand that this is a question from arithmetic progression, right? This is the concept that we need to use here. Initial speed, we are denoting with V0. That's 50 km per hour. Common difference is 5 km per hour because every hour it is increasing by the speed, right? Yes, Lochan, you can ask whatever doubt you have. Now, truck speed at the end of the 6th hour. So, V6 we need to find out here. We know that it is going to be V0 plus 5T, right? That's how we find out the 6th term. So, V6 is, V0 is 50, 5 times 5, that's 75 km per hour. Yes, 75 km per hour is the... Yes, seems like a physics question, yes? So, now, absolutely. Yes, Shrishti, please refresh it once. Hi, Sanskriti. Yes, that's the nth term formula that we can use here. Right, Rishit? Yes. So, all of you have understood? Great, great. Let's take a look at the next part of this question. If total journey takes 24 hours, then find the average speed of the truck. Now, again, in physics, you know how to calculate the average speed, right? You have the initial speed, that's 50 km per hour. You have the common difference, right? Now, we have to calculate the uh, total journeys of 24 hours. So, average speed. Average is what? Initial speed plus final speed divided by 2, right? So, let's calculate the speed of the end of the 24th hour first. That's going to be V0 plus 23D, which is 50 plus 23 times 5. That's going to be 165 km per hour, right? So, the average speed would be initial plus final by 2, which is 50 plus 165 by 2. You get 107.5 km per hour. That's the final answer. I don't know how come you are getting 80 km per hour. Yes? Hmm. No, Anshuman. See, this is what you need to figure out when you read a question, right? That's what your conceptual knowledge comes into picture. Absolutely. 107.5 km per hour. Understood very nicely, Manthan. Yes? Right? You need some time to solve. Okay, I'll go a little slow now. Yes? 
107.5. Yes. Correct. Hi, Anshita. So, all of you have understood. I hope, Lutzen, you understood where you got wrong. Yes? You got your mistake? All right. All right. Let's take a look at the next one. So, an aeroplane is taking off and being followed by a radar stationed at a height of 10 meters. So, here you can see that this is the radar over here. This is the plane, right? And the distance between them over here is 10 meters. Now, when a plane flies just above the radar, the height difference between the plane and the radar, right? When it is, when the plane is just above the radar like this, the, the distance, the distance between them is 2,990 meters. First, understand the question. After some time, the height of the aeroplane has increased by 3 kilometers. Okay, the height increases now. And the angle of elevation from the radar to the aeroplane is 30 degrees, right? So, after some time, when you look at it, right, from the radar, if you see, it is making an angle of 30 degrees, but it has moved, the distance has been increased this time. From 2,990 meters, it, it is increased by 3 kilometers more. Yes, yes, absolutely. Anyways, because it's already mentioned that elevation and degrees, so we know that it is from application of trigonometry. Yes, oh my god. All right, all right, I'll go a bit slower now, yes. 0.0030% faster. Yes, Penel? All right, all right. So, what you need to do is, you need to determine the aeroplane's final height above the ground and also we need to find out how far the plane gotten away from the radar. All right, Pratik Sharma. Yes. Quickly, tell me, how, we are, how will we find this out? First of all, we need to make a figure for this. Yes? Figure needs to be made. So first just write down the information that you have. Try making a figure based on the given information. First all of you quickly, I hope all of you are solving along with me. Try making a figure. Yes. Then you can cross check with, with mine. Yes, Charvi. Correct. Application of trigonometry. Right. Hi, Teju. Yes. Right, Yashad Kesarwani. Yes. Yes, Kashif, distance, yes. First, you will have to convert that in meters, right? I can see some new people over here, some new names. Hi, VP Gamer. Hi, Tripti. Okay, let's check the figure now. Are you done with it? Have you drawn yours? Yes. Quickly tell me so that we can move to the next slide. Why Teju M? Were you not prepared for it? All right, figure ready? Yes. Bhagya is giving thumbs up. Charvi says yes, ma'am. Harsh Kokru, no, no. Internet is fine in this class, Gungun. Yes. Drawn. Yes. Finish the sum. Wow, Lochan. All right, all right, all right. Let's take a look at the figure now. So, what we were given here, here we have the radar, right? Plane was just above it, right? 10 meters distance, right? This was given, right? 10 meters distance from radar to the plane, this was given to us. Now, the question says here that here, this is 2990, this BC over here, when it was just above it, that was 2990 at a height of 2990. After some time, what happens is when we see the plane from here, it makes an angle of elevation of 30 degrees, right? And also it is given that it, the height has been increased by 3 kilometers. 3 kilometers means 3000 meters, right? If this is 2990, so this distance over here, this is 3 kilometers or you can say 3000 meters, right? Yes, I can see the final answers over here. Yes, I just gave you time to draw the figure. You came up with final answers. How do I know that you are new? Because now I am familiar with the with the names of the students who are regularly attending the classes, Tripti. All right. So now we know how to apply this concept here, right? So what we will do here is simply let the final height of this plane is DG because we need to find out the final height above the ground. This is the ground level. So to find out DG, I would require DE, I would require EF and this FG. 
all these are needed yes okay so simply this de over here this de over here would be equal to ab right i can write ab over here instead of this and this ef over here is equal to bc i can write bc here and fg can be written as fg only okay now ab is what that's 10 meters bc over here is what that's 2990 and fg is what that's 3000 so we got dg that's 6000 meters that's the answer yes 6000 meter yes that's the right answer correct meters or kilometers it's, it's fine that's the final height all right so everybody has understood this now let's take a look at the next part how far has the plane gotten away from the radar all right so this is the given information that i already have so how far the plane has gotten away from the radar that means what do we need to find out here now the radar is here it's at the same place plane is finally here so we need to find out bg yes quickly find this out i'm waiting i'll wait for you to solve first diksha has got the answer wow diksha you are really fast i must say yes all right i can see answer samar saying 3000 samar saying 3000 root 3 okay not sure let's take a look so required distance is this in this triangle beg this is the triangle right this is angle 30 degree i can say sin 30 degree would be what that's perpendicular by hypotenuse right that's eg upon bg over here all right so i can say that i can write it this way bg equals to eg upon sin 30 degree that's fine we know sin 30 degree is what that's 1 by 2 which can be written as 0.5 right now eg is what this eg this distance this distance over here is what that's actually this is 2990 plus 3000 right because this is 2990 and this is 3000 so this entire distance we have just added them up right so what do i get here finally 11980 meters that's the final answer yes 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 some are saying yes vidushi thakur absolutely you check kahan galat ho gaye yes now you have seen the solution i'm sure that all of you have would have written the steps correctly but you might have make some calculation error but that's really strange that all of you have done the same error that's why you are getting the same answer all right yes i hope this is clear to everyone thank you rumi momen yes so i hope you got your mistake yes is it clear to everyone quickly quickly crystal clear yes aditya punder yours is right okay yes correct correct you can convert that and check it out once you convert it you can check it out clear charvi kavya pratap is giving thumbs up bhagya vardhan aditi datta 3000 3000 is this thing na this is given in the question that after some time when the angle of elevation changes to 30 degree now the plane's height has increased by 3000 so this is the increased height earlier plane was here now the height has been increased but angle has also been changed right i hope this is clear that's okay jyoti it's fine hmm all right all right um 11 km 980 m bhagya vardhan right all right all right okay let's so it's clear to everyone okay let's move ahead let's take a look at the next one following covid there is a greater awareness of health in the entire world now in order to be healthy and strong the indian government encourages students to ride bicycle so a student rides his bicycles to school but he always has a problem with a loose chain in his bike okay you can see a picture over here right this is the chain we are talking about right all of you would know this thing this is the chain that we are talking about you can see it is drawn with this dotted orange line over here yes all right now what we need to find out here is we need to find out the length of arc on bigger sprocket 
and the exact length of chain required in order to fix the problem. We are given some values over here. Square root of 1, 2, 4, 1 is 35.2 and pi is 22 by 7. So when you come across such values in the question, you can use them. Now let's understand this figure first. You can see this is the, the line drawn in, uh, in orange color, right? This dotted line. This is the chain that we are talking about. So this over here, you can see that this is the bigger circle over here. This is the smaller one. This one has got a radius of 4. This one has got a radius of 12. This angle over here is one is 80 degree. And this over here straight line is nothing but that's a tangent to this circle. So this angle over here is 90, right? And if I connect these distances with this straight line, right? Distance between the centers of the two circles, this is 70 centimeter. First understand the figure, right? I'll give you time to solve. Yes. Thank you, Navneet Singh. I can see lots of hearts. <laughs> yes. Anthan concept cleared. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. Areas related to circles. And the bit of circles concepts also. Right. So you have basically, you understood which chapter we are using, which concept are we going to use here. All right. All right. So quickly tell me, what is the length of arc on the bigger sprocket? I'm waiting. Yes, hi Neil. Vidushi, everything is clear. Okay, great. Hi, Satendra Kumar Verma. Yes, statistics. Don't worry. We have a question on statistics as well. First, let's complete this one. Yes. Construction par, Yes, you can do. Is mega construction if you feel ki karna hai, you can do it. Yes. Ho sakta hai. All right, all right. So let's understand this, right? So this is the figure that we have. You can see orange dotted line. That's the that's the basically chain that we are talking about here, right? So here we can see that this A B over here, this is the tangent. This is the tangent to these two circles, right? And over here you can see that theta over here. And radius and tangent, you know that they're always perpendicular at the point of contact. This concept is from circles chapter, right? So in between, I'll tell you which concept is from which chapter, how we are actually using it, right? Now here, this is the another tangent, right? Which is drawn to these two circles. And you can see that this is the angle theta subtended by the major arc of this bigger sprocket. Yes, and here you can see this is the angle theta subtended by this major, major arc in this smaller one. Yes, and let's denote this length of arc by L1 and this length of arc by L2, right? I hope this much part is clear to everyone. Yes. Uh, Diksha is saying 20.9, so I think he got the answer, yes. Mm. Yes, all right. All right, now what we need to find out here is the length of arc on bigger sprocket, right? So on the bigger sprocket, what is the length of arc? This is the bigger sprocket, right? So the length of arc over here is this one. This over here is the length of arc that we need to find out, right? You can see over here that I highlighted with yellow. This L1, this is the length of arc on the bigger sprocket. This is what we are going to find out first. So how to find this out? First of all, what I'll do is, we connect this, this is the center of this circle, right? We have drawn a straight line from here. And this is the line which is connecting the centers of the two circles, right? A straight line. Now this was already joined in the figure, right? This is a 90 degree angle and this is the radius of the circles, right? And radius and tangent are 90 degree, are perpendicular at the point of contact. And same here also. Yes. I hope this much part is clear to everyone. Charvi, one more time. So you can see that you can see over here, we have drawn this straight line, right, through the center, yes, and this is the line which is connecting the centers of the two circles. Here, this is the tangent to the circle, right, from, from center, we have drawn this radius, and radius and tangent are always 90 degree. Same ways here as well, same ways here as well, right? This much part is clear. Yes. These are the sprockets over here, you can see. This is the bigger sprocket, this is the smaller one, right? Which has got spokes inside it. 
Yes. Okay, I can see thumbs up and all. All right. So this is clear. Now let's mark this angle as theta. Why? This entire angle. See length of arc. As, as I said that L1 is basically the length of arc which is basically subtended, which is basically made by the major arc over here. This major arc is making this length. Um, this is L1, right? So here till here, this much angle is covered. You can see it is coming till here, till this line, right? So what I can say over here is this is what that's 70 centimeter, right? So I need to find L1. How to find out the length of arc? That's basically theta by 360 into circumference of circle. I'll use this as 2 pi r1. Let's say the radius of the bigger circle over here is r1, right? So what I can say over here is, see, pay attention to this. This much angle over here, this is a straight line. I need entire theta. This much part over here is 180 degree. After that, this much part is left and this angle is left. So theta is basically 180 degree plus angle BCI plus angle DCG right this these are the sprockets over here right the bigger one and the smaller one that's okay nicer purchit purohit this is clear right area related to circles you can see that these are the formulas from areas related to circles and circles concepts also we are using here right Right. This is clear. All right. So here what I can say is this is 180 degree, right? And these two angles over here, they will be equal, right? Because already here the rate, it is basically a part of the same circle. Radii is same. Angle over here are same, right? So it is twice of angle BCI. And we know that it was already given in the question that this angle over here was 80 degree. So this is going to be 90 degree minus 80 degrees, right? Circles is also used here, right? The concept is mixed. All right. So here I can say that it is twice of 10 degrees. So theta is going to be 200 degrees in this case. Yes. This is clear that theta is this and theta is this entire thing you see. Entire thing in orange. This is theta. Uh, in figure 80 degree is given them the side downwards E F. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not able to read the entire question. One second, let me just go back to the previous slide. Let me show you where 80 degree is. Here we have this angle 80 degrees. This angle. You can see this is the line connecting the centers of the two circles from here between this radii. Till here it's 80 degrees. Right? Right. How did I find BCI? So this much part. Just remember this thing. This is 80 degrees. So if you say in this figure... If I mark here, this much part over here, right? From here till this part, that's 80 degrees, right? And we already know that radius and tangent over here, that's going to be 90 degrees, right? So from here, you can get this remaining angle, BCI, this one. Yes, because this over here, this is also going to be 90 degrees. Yes, this is 80 degrees over here. Right. Ananya. All right, I'm explaining one more time. So what we are doing here is we are finding out the length of the major arc of the bigger sprocket, which is this much part, right? This much part over here. So to find this out, the formula is theta by 316 to 2 pi r1. For this, you would require theta first. Yes, we need theta. So to find this out, this much part over here is 80 degree. This is given to us, right? And this much part is 180 degrees. This much part, right? Because it's a straight line till here. It is a straight line. So this is given. And these two angles over here are going to be equal because all the radii and same, everything is same here. So angles are going to be equal. That we can write as twice of angle BCI. Right? Yes. All right. So here I can say that this is twice of 90 degree minus 80 degree. Yes. That will also be same. Right? Right? Yes. Yes, Fenin, that, that is also same. So that is twice of 10 degrees. So from here, you get this as 180 degree plus 20 degree. That's 200 degrees. All you need to do is substitute here. All right. So we have 200 by 360 by 2 times 22 by 7 into R1, which is 12. You get this value, right? Yes. I hope this much part is clear to everyone. Understood, Ananya? Diksha forgot to multiply it too. That's okay. Uh, is it, is it, is IG is diameter. Yes, that's a diameter. It is passing to the center. 
connecting any two points in the circumference also class is daily or not see for that i would say, i would say that please subscribe the channel you will get the notifications for like whatever classes we have on what all timings and days yes all right clear great so from here what do we get we get 880 by 21 cm that's the length of the that's l1 right the length of arc major arc of bigger sprocket yes biswajit paul understood lochan j happy yes understood great clear to everyone all right or yes you can convert that in decimals also because at the end we would require it better you convert it in decimals now let's move to the next part so it says find the exact length of chain required in order to fix the problem exact length of chain right that means this orange dotted line over here you need to find out this entire length yes so what we will do from here is to get this length i have this much part already now i have this much part yes i need this straight lines also both of them are going to be equal right and i need this curvy part also right this is l2 so let's do one thing here let's drop a perpendicular from this f to this bc right which is meeting over here at h so this is a perpendicular over here right so using this in this triangle fch i can use the pythagoras theorem in the whole youtube only pythagoras is best for learning thank you gungun no no we are using circles concepts over here right so you can see pythagoras theorem is also you so you cannot say that ma'am we are using pythagoras theorem so this can't be asked in exam right it's not like that concepts can be you know different different concepts can be put in one question mainly it is from circles concepts are very related to circles concepts of trigonometry so different different concepts are used here you see even whatever concepts you have studied in grade 9th also sometimes those concepts are also used in the question so do we say that this cannot be asked in the exam no it's not like that right yes all right so now this is a right angle triangle right so we can say that this this is a perpendicular so this is going to be the hypotenuse so fc square is equal to fh square plus hc square right we have fc i mean uh, we have this fc over here right that's going to be what that's actually 70 70 square so we need to find out fh so fh square is equal to 70 square plus 12 minus 4 square why 12 minus 4 this entire over here is 12 right but if you see we have drawn this line from here right so this much part over here is going to be 4 this is 4 over here right this is equal and parallel right so this remaining part is going to be 12 minus 4 yes long one see such kind of questions can come in the exam so how would you deal with them in your exam then you need to practice such questions right yes okay so this is 12 minus 4 that is 4900 12 minus 4 is 8 square that's 64 so 4964 take a square root of it like you can split it up it's better because already the value of square root of 1 to 4 1 was given in the question so 4 times square root of 1 to 4 1 to 4 1 that's 2 times 35.2 Yes, that's seventy point four seventy seventy point four centimeter. Yes, hi Subha. Yes, you have missed a few questions, but you can watch them later on. The recorded session is also there on YouTube, right? Second part. Yes, Charvi. So what we are doing here is, I need the length of the entire chain to find out the length of the entire chain. I would require. I have this part now. This we got in the first part of the question. Now I need this curvy part also. So to find this out, uh, we have drawn a perpendicular on this PC, right? So now this is what? This is a 90 degree uh, angle. This is a right angle triangle. We can use Pythagoras. This is 70. We are finding out FH. This entire BC is 12, but this and this is parallel. So this is also 4. So from the 12, I am subtracting 4. We get remaining HC. That's 12 minus 4. No Siddharth. No. Right. So that's 12 minus 4 whole square. the concepts are you see that's why i tell you in questions we use the concepts from grade 8th also grade 9th also it's not like that we cannot use it's it's not like that that you can use the concepts that are a part of term 2 only this is maths right the concepts whatever you have learned before they can be used in the questions this is from circles all right yes this is for term 2 absolutely we are preparing you for term 2 exam so definitely it is for term 2 so now we can say that it is 4900 plus 64 that's 4964 write it like this 4 times 1241 already question uh, in the question there is a value of square root of 1241 41 that's 35.2 you get 70.4 cm yes 
करेक्ट वॉट अबाउट दी आर्स सी वी गॉट दी आर्क लेंथ दीक्षा वी गॉट एल वन दिस इज एल वन वी गॉट दिस मच पार्ट इन द प्रीवियस पार्ट वन दिस इज एल टू नाउ आई नीड दीज वन आई नीड द लेंथ ऑफ दीज स्ट्रेट लाइन यस यस लवन एल एनी डाउट वॉट डाउट डू यू हैव यस वर्सिटैलिटी ऑफ मैथ्स यस अंशुमन यस Lavanya, you have any doubt? You can just write in the comment section. What are you not able to understand here? Yes, theorem one is based on theorem of grade nine. So there is no such rule that this cannot be asked because this was a part of grade nine. All right, so concepts can be used. Thank you, Subha. Yes, it's okay, Keshvi. One more time, okay. I'm explaining. I'm explaining the part one as well. One more time for the ones who haven't understood, so that they get a proper clarity, right? And then we'll move ahead. All right. So what we are doing here is first we are finding out the length of the arc of the bigger sprocket, right? This is the bigger sprocket that I'm talking about. Length of arc here. This is the length of arc, right? Now this is a straight line. This is passing through center. That's the diameter, right? So I need this entire angle to find this out. Entire angle theta. When it is a straight line, angle would be 180 degrees, right? Plus this angle BCI plus this angle to get this entire angle theta. So this is 180 degree, and this much part over here was 80 degrees, right? So from here you can say that both these angles BCI and DCG are equal, right? Same, everything is same. Radii is same. It is joined with center, so you can say that it is twice of angle BCI. Yes. So BCI is going to be what? 90 degrees minus 80 degrees. Yes. So now I can say over here is this is going to be twice of 10 degrees. That's basically 200 degrees. We get the theta from here. Just put it here. 200 by 360 into 2 into 22 by 7 into 12. You get this value. Okay. Understood, Lavanya. So it's 880 by 21. You can convert it into decimals because we would require it later on. Yes. It's yes. It's clearly evident that L1 over here is bigger than L2. Obviously, yes. All right, all right. Now, similarly, I need the, this L2 as well, the smaller one, right? Length of arc of the smaller one. So for that, we have drawn a perpendicular from this F to this BC. Now this is 90 degree. See, this is four. So this over here is also four. But entire BC is 12. I need HC from here. That's going to be 12 minus four. Yes, Lavanya understood. All right. yes it contains a lot of concepts you see in this one question we are using so many concepts these kind of question can be asked in the exam so we are using pythagoras theorem here right so on using pythagoras simply it's 70 square plus 12 minus 4 whole square we are finding out fh you get 4900 plus 64 4964 take the square root of it that's 4 times 1 to 4 one you can split it up this way also because already the value of square root of 1 to 4 one was given in the question so 2 times 35.2 it's 70.470 70.4 cm right yes Clearing doubts, pi choose is best. Thank you, Lochan Jay. All right, so it's clear to everyone, right? Now all I need is I need the length of this entire chain. Let the length of the entire chain be L. So I need to find out L two also, right? That's going to be what three sixty degree minus theta by three sixty degree. That's two pi r two, right? Radius over here is so four by nine, forty four by seven by four. That's seven zero four by sixty three. Yes. So the entire Uh, chain length is L1 plus 2AB plus L2. See, AB and this ED are all equal. Thank you, Ashna. Thank you, Ash. I'm sorry. Yes. How is it? It was four. It is already given in the question. It is given that this has a radius of four centimeter. Yes, Anshuman. Please read the question carefully. Whatever information you get from there, write it down somewhere first. You can write it down at the at one side. it becomes easier because again and again then you will have to read the question you will miss out a few things yes we have already done questions on quadratic equations in ap yes all right so here here what do we have so we have 80 880 by 21 41.9 this is 150.8 that's 11.1 you get 203.8 cm that's the final result that you get That's the exact length of chain which is required to fix the problem, right? 
So I hope that everyone has got the same answer. Yes. Quickly. All right. Understood. All right. All right. So let's take a look at the next question now. So India is a growing nation because of substantial advances in infrastructure and civil works. Power consumption is rising. Now, in order to meet de demand, the Indian government is concentrating on expanding electricity output from non-power dams. The reservoir in the diagram is the is a cylindrical shape, right? Make a note of it. With a radius of 200 meters, this reservoir that you can see over here is it is cylindrical in shape. It has a radius of 200 meters. This is the important information. Height is 500 meters. So we have radius. We have height. It is cylindrical. In the dam, there are five square gates with a side length of one meter each. Five square gates are there, you can see, right? And each one has a side length of one meter each. Yes? Lengthy one. See, these kind of case studies are going to come in the exam, right? So you need to be, you know, well versed with them. Do a lot of practice of case studies. All right. Thank you. My music is my aim, Subham. All right. Now there are two questions based on this that we need to answer. First is if reservoir is completely filled with water, then the amount of water the reservoir can store. Now it is completely filled with water. So how much water it can store? I hope that you have noted down the given information because now it's time that you will solve this question first. I'll not reveal the answer. So if reservoir is full of water, then water amount of water the reservoir can store. You can see four options over here. So I'm giving you 60 seconds to solve it and I'm starting the timer. Now, quickly, let me see who will answer first. Yes. Mm. Maths is so simple. It's so simple only because of a few for me. Thank you, Sairaj. Kyun na ho paega? This is really simple. Three things were given in the question. It is cylindrical, radius is given, height is given, reservoir is full of water, total amount of water you have to find out. The legendary, the legendary gamer. Yes, I can see answers. A lot of students are saying it's B. Let's see what the correct answer is. Yeah, quickly. Kashif Ishtiar Khan is saying it's A. Okay. Okay, time is up. All right, let's check the right answer. Yes, it's A. I think Kashif Ishtiar Khan has actually solved it. Others have only, you know, copied down from each other. Okay, okay, this is the answer. So, option A is the right answer for this. Yes. Tukka. No, tukka kyu marna hai? All right, let's take a look at the solution. Now you can see where you got wrong. So it is full of water. Radius is given. Height is given in meters, right? Let's say the volume of the reservoir is, uh, let's denote that by V. We know that it is cylindrical, so volume is pi r square h, right? So pi 200 square times 5. So substitute the values. You get this at the end, right? Simple one. Only you need to know the formula. Just put the values. Also, you did not have to put the value of pi in this question. So, calculation was very simple here. Yes? Correct. Zero counting a mistake. Ho gai. Zeros, thoda dur dur rakho, please. <laughs> so, only one student, Kashiv Istiyar Khan, gave the right answer for this. Wow, Kashiv, amazing. All right, don't worry, we have one more question for you. Now, you will answer the second question also. So, if one gate is opened, and 1000 pi liter of water is removed from the reservoir, the level of water left in the reservoir is. Again, you will be given 60 seconds for this. Ready? Yes? <laughs> all right, all right. So, I'm starting the timer now. Quickly, right? Give your answers. Yes. Correct, Gungun. Counting mistake. Because there were a lot of zeros, right? I can see answers. Some are saying D, some are saying B. Yes. 
D Deepak, we are already done with the quadratic equation question and uh, an AP one also, right? Those were the first two questions. See, I'm covering questions from all the chapters. Okay, B. Okay, maximum students are saying it's B, B, B. I can see B, 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 B. Yes. Okay, okay. All right. Let's check the solution. Time is up. Okay, let's see what the correct answer is now. Oh, it's C. Maxim, most of you were saying it's it's B. Some said it's A also, but right answer is C. How come? Again, you got the wrong answer. Penil, dekho ma'am, sabko zeros counting mein hi mistake ho rahi hai. Dekha, mein kabhi galat nahi hota. <laughs> right, I can see that. Now students are saying it's C. Yasharth is saying it's C. Kabe Pratap is saying C. Okay, let's check the solution. So let's say the level of water in the reservoir over here is H1, actual, right? The leftover water, I'm sorry, yes. So the volume removed is what? That's basically 40,000 40, pi meter cube over here, right? Now the volume left is what? We will simply subtract them. So what do we get? We get pi r square H1 is equal to this value, yes, right? And simply H1 is equal to this value upon 200 square. So we get 1996 by 4. That's going to be 499 meters. Yes. Yes. All right. All. So all of you have understood, right? Where you got wrong. See, it's okay. Till the time you know how to solve it. Right? This is more important right now. You should know how to solve these kind of questions. Calculation is, anyways, that's an important part of mathematics. I know that's the most challenging thing, thing here. So this was about, this was from surface areas and volumes. Now let's take a look at the next question. This is from statistics. So a project was allotted to a group of students on statistics. The weight of 49 male students were collected from grade 8 to 10 of their school. The collected data is arranged in less than cumulative frequency form. You can see this table over here, right? Observe this table carefully. In the first column, we are given weights in kgs, less than 40 kgs. So one student has a weight less than 40 kgs, six students have a weight less than 44 kgs, like this the data is given. Yes? Alright. So we three questions are there which are based on this, we need to answer them. First is find the median class of the given data, second is find the median weight of the given data and the modal class of the given data. It's very simple, right? It's not difficult if you can understand this given data properly. Yes, quickly, quickly answer the first question, the median class of the given data. First you solve it, then I'll tell you the right answer. Hi Rudra Mavi, yes. Yes, I think uh, Deepak is asking about sum of AP and right, right. Yes, Swarna is saying 48 kgs, okay. Hitesh Bhai, 45. Okay, let's check the answer for the first one. So this is the given data. First, we need to make the cumulative frequency column. How do we find this out? First one remains same. We add the another one to it, 6. 6 plus 9, 15. 15 plus 12, 27. 27 plus 18, 45. And this is 49 at the end, right? Now, we find out n by 2, that's going to be what? 49 by 2, which is 24.5. Now, we look for the value, which is just greater than 24.5 in the cumulative frequency column, and that is 27. So, the corresponding value in the class interval over here is this. That means the median class is 48 to 52. That's the median class. Absolutely right. Yes, so all of you have given the right answer. So, we know how to solve these kind of questions. Okay. Let's take a look at the next one where we need to find out the median weight of the given data. Quickly, find out the median weight. Yes. Uh, Ma'am, how we have taken 0 to 40? 0 to 40 over here. See, it was given less than, it was given to us in the previous one, less than, let me just show you, less than 40 kgs, right? So it's not necessary that you have to take from like, you know, you have to give a gap of 40, 40 initial value. You can take like this 0 to 40. That's fine. Doesn't matter even if there is a big gap or here the gaps are same for the first value I'm saying. 
Yes, yes, absolutely. Statistics is a part of term two syllabus. And median questions are also there. Ananya understood, yes. Mm, quickly, give me the answer, the median weight of the given data, what it will be. Or shall I tell the answer now? Siraj is saying 51.1. Okay. All right. We all know the formula of median, right? That's basically L plus N by 2 minus cumulative frequency by F into H. Yes. Okay. All we need to do is just put the values. This is the median class. So this is the lower limit of the median class. Put it here. We already have N by 2, 49 by 2. And what is the cumulative frequency over here? We know that cumulative frequency we consider of the previous class. Frequency we consider of the same class. That's 12. And class size, right? That's what? That's 4. That's 48 plus 19 by 6, which is 48 plus 3.16, that 51.16 kgs. Right, Siraj. Siraj gave the, gave the first answer for this. Yes, absolutely correct. Yes, that's the right answer. All right, let's take a look at the third part now. So we have to find out the modal class of the given data. How do we find out the modal class, by the way? How do we find this out? Quickly. Write in the comment section, how can we find out the modal class for a data? Yes? Correct, D. Deepak, right. See, I gave you ample time to solve it. You asked me to go slow. Correct, Charvi, the class with the highest frequency. Yes? Yes. So, Siraj is saying 52 to 56. Absolutely right. Yes. So maximum class frequency over here is we can see that's 18. This is the, this has got the maximum frequency. So this is the modal class 52 to 56. That's the right answer. Yes. Right. Most occurring one. Right, Mohamad Tabrez. Correct. So this, that's how we can find out the modal class. All right. So everyone has understood these concepts from different, different chapters. Like if you come across, when you come across question, uh, case-based questions, how do you have to read that out? How to look for the, you know, the keywords from the question. So I would suggest you write them down at one side, right? Because again, you will have to go through the entire question. That will also, it's basically, you know, time consuming. All right. So this was the last question of today's session, but this is not the end because we have lined up many more sessions for you from every Monday to Friday to make you exam ready. Now let me give you a glimpse of the upcoming session. So our next session is on February 24th, that is Thursday at 7 p.m. So we will be discussing complete term 2 formula sheet and this is one thing I think many students were asking for this. That ma'am please give us a complete formula sheet where we get all the formulas for the entire grade 10 term 2 syllabus. Yes. Thank you IQO. Yes. All right, so do not miss the session and you know that we have got free trial classes as well and link for that is given in the description. So please click on that link and you can gain uh, access to all such great content and also you can get all your doubts clarified instantly during the class. And please like, share and subscribe so that you do not miss from any new updates from us. All right, yes, Gungun Tagore, amazing session. Thank you. Yes, bye-bye, Hitesh. Yes. Thank you, Nani Gaming. Itni tayari ho chuki hai. All the very best, Siraj. Yes. Thank you. Thanks a lot, all of you. So I'll see you on Thursday. Bye-bye.